Snapchat has been a pioneer in machine learning effects for years now. If you've ever seen the old person effect or the one that turns you into a baby or even the cartoon effects that are on Snapchat, those are mostly using machine learning to transform you into a custom character created basically just for you. And the reason how they, or the way that they create that is by using machine learning and incorporating tons of data set images and creating this custom option using this technology just for your face. And that's why my person as a senior looks different from somebody else, or me as a baby looks different from somebody else as a baby, compared to if I were to use face morphing and makeup to try to customize a baby effect on the face. Um, this effect is actually making your makeup disappear and turning you into a child, or turning you into a older person, creating wrinkles and lines in spots on your face that might be different from somebody else's. Um, it's actually such incredible technology. And Snapchat has actually recently made this available for us to be able to work with some of these templates and play around with them and add them to our lenses on Snapchat. So inside Snapchat, you could access a lot of these templates and you could, or inside Snapchat, you could access a lot of these ML effects and you could bring them into your lenses and create virtual try-ons with them or add all kinds of accessories or hats or even backdrops to them and then kind of customize them a bit. For example, you could take an old person and turn them into Santa, or you could take a baby and add a bonnet and add a pacifier or something, or you could take a cartoon character and then you could turn it into an IMVU character, which is what I did in one of my lenses. I took the IMV, I took the uh, cartoon character effect, the avatar, and I created a IMVU style character makeup look based off of it. So by taking this effect, I layered on top of it some face warping and then from there, I added makeup to it and some hair segmentation and just totally customized the look of this effect. So it doesn't even almost look like the same effect as when it started. So this is something really cool that you could do with these ML, um, I guess, capabilities inside Lens Studio. I believe you could also create your own ML effects for Lens Studio if you're able to code them and also create a large image data set. But if you just want to get started and play around with some of your favorite ML effects from Snapchat, even stuff like the sad face or the shook face and stuff like that, they have things like that within Lens Studio that you could play around with and build upon and it customize. So I think that that's really fun. So I wanted to create this tutorial to show you how to access that stuff and how to use it in your own effects. So let's get started. Everyone, so one of my favorite templates in Lens Studio is the custom components template. It allows you to use the machine learning templates that Snapchat has already created to use as a base so that you could have this AI, ML style looking character transformation be your base for your project. This is amazing for using um, character effects and being able to combine some of your 3D assets or 3D fashion with a character look without having to do makeup or dramatic transformations and stuff like we usually do with face morphing and texturing. So to get started, type in custom components up here in the search bar and you'll see this pop up. So now you can see I look dramatically different and I look kind of like a baby and really well done baby. It's like really amazing. And that's because this is an ML filter that Snapchat has developed to turn us into babies. Um, this is a really advanced style uh, capability, creating machine learning effects that use this amount of a data set to create something like this. So what Snapchat has done is it's preset, it's, or it's preloaded a ton of different ML types into this program. So you have baby, you have bald, you have animation style, anime style, and then you could do custom components to add some of your own or add some of the ones that they've also created that are in the asset library. So you could actually click over here in the orthographic camera and you could toggle on and off some of these different uh, items here. So we could turn off baby and we could choose bald, which turns me into a bald person. You could do animation style, which turns you into almost like a Pixar style character. And then you could choose something like anime, like, hi, I'm an anime character. And by clicking custom component, we're gonna go, or add component, we're gonna add the vintage poster effect. So what we're gonna do over here on the right is click add component. Then we're gonna look for vintage poster by typing that in. So I think you can look for it here. So you can see in the custom component tab over here, there are other ones that were not included in this template. And they're always adding new ones like all the time in the asset library. So you can keep your lookout, keep a lookout for any of those components and you'll be able to import them into this project and use them here like this tongue twister. There you go. Oh my God, that's crazy. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm going to do crying. Oh my God, so depressing. And then we're gonna click and do vintage poster. 
And you can see I got transformed into what looks like an advertisement from the 1940s or something. It's really amazing. And so there's tons of different styles here. This is, I think, one of my favorite ones. This one really looks like a vintage cartoon. And then they have the animation style or avatar style is also really nice. So I use avatar style a lot as a base for different character filters, especially when I'm just looking to use something that looks like a nice, clean cartoon character effect that looks a little bit more like a sim or like a, um, you know, like a video game character. And then you could overlay post effects on top of this. Like the, op the options are endless. The things you could do are really endless with this component. So we're just going to go back to vintage poster for a sec. And what you'll see that you could do is you could add post effects to it, like let's do color correction. And so you could add a color correction there. Let's see. And so what we're gonna do is add another camera in the scene above that and we're going to go into our scene configuration here make sure that this is after and so now i'm going to go and add a post effect or color correction and i'm going to do black and white and so now by putting black and white there you can see that the whole scene has been transformed into black and white and that's because the render order of this is above these other cameras so that way the black and white sits on top of everything that's below it. And so now you have like a pure vintage effect. If you want to continue to customize this character and make it a little bit more just custom to your own liking, you can go into this plus sign over here and you could add, say, a face stretch. So going into face effects here, you could do face stretch. And so now let's say I want to make the face a little bit smaller or something, just like more like a Betty Boop or something like that. I can do that, make the eyes a little bit bigger. And then you can go and go again, click the plus sign and go to liquidify, face liquidify. And now you could see that it gave me big eyes. And so by clicking on this little arrow, you could open this up and you'll see two different face liquidifies. Those are circles that are placed over the eyes. So if you wanna make these say a little bit wider, you could do that or you can make them narrower and you can increase the intensity of the scale or you can make them even smaller. And so I like maybe 1.1, so it's just slightly bigger. And now we have big eyes and a very small chin. And so that's how you use the custom component ML character filters in Lens Studio and how you can add and overlay things on top of it, like makeup or like face stretching. Again, if you want to add makeup, you can go and add a face mask and you'll see the face mask overlays on this character face. You could also place it below it, but you could. I tend to usually use it above it, and then I just optimize the texture to map to the face. So that's how you use custom components in Lens Studio and customize with machine learning characters. I'll see you in the next workshop.